This is lesson 1.3 in elementary intermediate algebra, addition of real numbers. And we're going to kind of skip around a lot with this. I'm not going to have you do some of the things that they have with the number line here. But I do want to at least remind you that all that number line does is gives you a list of numbers to the right of zero and a list of numbers to the left. List of numbers to the right are all positive. List of numbers to the left are all negative numbers. So the positive and negative are a direction on the number line. And they try to explain how to use the number line to add and subtract numbers. And I think it is very confusing. So I don't teach it that way. So let's throw out that dumb number line. And let's just uh, work at adding and subtracting or adding, I guess, positive and negative numbers. At this point, we're not going to do any subtraction of negative numbers. We're just going to add them. So instead of saying 3 minus 6, we're going to write it as an addition. So you're going to change that minus to a plus, and you're going to put a minus on the 6. So you're going to have 3 plus negative 6 instead of 3 minus 6. And when you get an example, like example number 1, it gives us 3 plus negative 6. 4. So what does that mean? All you have to do is look at the first number and the last number. First number is a positive, last number is a negative. The signs are different. When the signs are different, you take the difference between the 3 and the 4. We ignore the signs. You just take the difference between the 3 and the 4. The difference between 3 and 4 is 1. And you put the sign of the largest number on the answer, and you're done. So 3 plus negative 4 is negative 1. If we have 3, negative 3 plus 6, we have two different signs. We have a negative 3 and we have a positive 6. Signs are different, so we take the difference between 3 and 6. Put the sign of the largest number, in this case it's a plus because it's a 6, on the answer and we're done. We don't need to put a plus sign when it's positive, but if that helps you to remember what you're doing, um, that's just fine. Now, when we're doing things like signs are the same, we'll try one of those. If I have 3 plus 6, signs are the same, so we add the numbers, and we put the sign of what those numbers are on the answer. If I have negative 3 plus negative 6, signs are the same, so we add them, and we put the sign that we're given on the answer. When I have negative 3 plus negative 4, signs are the same. I add the numbers, put the sign on it, and I'm done. All right, so not really too much to do in that. Um, yeah, I think that's about it as far as going over that, which takes us all the way over to, well, let's look at example number 10. It says we've got a negative 3, and we're going to add 2, and then we're going to add a negative 4. So notice what we have here. We have addition signs here and here. So we're going to take negative 3 and 2 and add those together, and notice the signs are the same are different. One's a negative 3, one's a positive 2. Signs are different. We're going to take the difference between the two, put the sign of the largest number on the answer. And then we're going to leave the rest of it alone. Now we're going to do this part of it. Signs are the same, so we add the number and put the sign of the problems on there, and we're done. When we're given one like number 11, that one is a little bit trickier because it's just so doggone big. So we've got negative 8 plus 2 plus negative 5 plus negative 1. All right, we're going to do what's in the parentheses here first. Remember PEMDAS. We're doing what's in the parentheses first. So we're going to leave the rest of it alone. We're going to put our brackets there and do what's in there and then continue to put stuff together. So 2 plus negative 5. Signs are different. We're going to take the difference. Put the sign of the largest number on there. Now we're going to combine these two because we're going from left to right. Negative 8 plus negative 3, signs are the same. We're going to add those and put the sign on there. Now we've got a negative 1 at the end. We're going to add negative 11 plus negative 1, signs are the same. We're going to add the numbers up, put the sign 
on there and we're done. Okay, example 12. We start with negative 10 and we go plus 2 and in parentheses negative 8 plus 11 plus negative 4. All right, we're going to do this in the parentheses first. The negative 8 plus 11, we're going to write everything else as is. Negative 8 plus 11, signs are different. There's a negative on the 8 and there's a positive on the 11. So signs are different. We take the difference between the two, put the sign of the largest number in on there, which is a positive, so we just leave it as a 3. Now that we're done with the parentheses, we're going to do our multiplication. Remember PEMDAS. Parentheses, exponents, which there aren't any, multiplication, division from left and right, addition, subtraction from left to right. So negative 10 plus 2 times 3 is 6 plus negative 4. Now we're going to do our subtraction and addition from left to right. Negative 10 plus 6. Signs are different, so we're going to take the difference. We're going to put the sign of the largest number on there, and we're done with that part of it. We have negative 4 there. Okay, signs are the same, so we're going to add those up, put the sign on there, and we be done. All right. This last section in 1.3 has to do with arithmetic sequences or arithmetic sequences. And a sequence is basically just a list of number that are list of numbers that are in an order. But when you have an arithmetic sequence, like um, two. 5, 8, 11, dot, dot, dot. Um, an arithmetic sequence is a list of numbers or a sequence of numbers in which each number, 5, 8, 11, is found by adding the same amount to the number before it. So how did we get to 5? Well, we added 3 to the 2. How did we get to 8? We added 3 to the one before it, the 5. And we got to 11 by adding the one before it to 3, etc. So that's an arithmetic sequence. So each number was found by adding 3 to the number right before it. So you're given some examples, like example 14. Um, they give you 7, 10, and 13, and they want you to find the next two numbers. So we're looking for that number and that number. Well, how did we get from 7 to 10? We added 3. How did we get to 10 to 13? We added 3. So 13, we add 3, we get 16. We add 3 to 16, and we get 19. Um, in B, we start out with 9.5, and we go to 10. And then we go to 10.5. What did we do to go from 9.5 to 10? We added a half. 10 to 10.5, we added a half. 10.5 to 11 when we add a half, and 11.5 when we add another half. So notice that whenever we go from one number to the next number, it's done by adding the exact same amount. So this one we went 7 plus 3, 10 plus 3, 13 plus 3, 16 plus 3. So it's always plus 3. Here it was plus 0.5, or plus a half for each one of them. So that should make it a little bit easier. But when we're given something like C, we're given 5, 0, negative 5, and we're asked to find this number and this number. Well, how did we go from 5 to 0? We added a negative 5, right? It's 5 plus negative 5 is 0. What's 0 plus negative 5? Negative 5. What's negative 5 plus negative 5? So this one is that number, and this one is what we're adding to it, negative 10. And then when we add negative 5 to that, we get negative 15. So that's my sequence there. Okay. So that's it for um, problem set 1.3.